Hey guys, it's us. Uh, we have some exciting news um, coming in July. We're expecting. And we're really excited, but honestly, like this has been a really long journey for the both of us. And we honestly feel like it's just a complete gift from God that this is actually happening for us. So um, we kind of just want to go through our whole entire story of how we got to where we are right now. Um, and just like our struggles because we know that there's a lot of people who don't know about these things and things that m might help some other people. So For sure. yeah, we just kind of want to go to that and let you guys know um, how we've been. We don't really post on social media a lot. So the fact that we're posting this is a huge thing and it's very nerve wracking for us. We obviously like even before being married, like had a huge desire to have kids and have a family. That's just something that's always been on our heart. About two years ago, we kind of decided that um, it was a good time for us to start building our family. So we got this house and after we got the house, it was just kind of our desire to pursue um, having a kid. So we just kind of started on the journey of trying and that was very hard at the beginning. And like long story short, we just, um, we weren't getting pregnant and there were a lot of issues going on with me um, personally. And I had a lot of health issues that were going on and so, I, I went to the doctor after having troubles for, I don't know, probably eight or nine months. I just didn't want to go to the doctor because I thought like everything was going to be okay and I don't like going to the doctor. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows that I like to take care of things myself. So um, I, you know, just didn't go to the doctor, kept putting it off thinking that like things were going to level out for me and everything was just going to be fine. But um, it just got to a point where we wanted to start our family and we felt like the last option was to go to the doctor. We went to the doctor and um, pretty much they couldn't really know exactly what was happening, but she put me on a medication that was um, supposed to try to get things rolling for me. And honestly, it was a horrible medication. <laughs> Let's say that was probably <laughs> the roughest week you had in, in like a long time. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. We um, we were actually on vacation with my mom and, um, and my stepdad. and. I just felt horrible and like it just really messed with my body and my hormones and so um, after taking that medication uh, I did feel like there was something that went on and that like it was trying to get me back regulated but um, it just didn't really do the trick for us and so we you know kept trying after that but it it was still very hard and things were not um, really feeling right with me still. My hair was falling out and I was getting a lot of acne and I just didn't feel right. My stomach would feel weird. Just felt off, felt like something was wrong. So um, we went back to the doctor and um, she said, you know, I, I don't think that this is gonna be fixed by this medication, obviously. So I wanna take some, some labs and see, you know, what's going on. So after she took some labs, she kind of highlighted some areas that she thought could be a problem. And so um, one of those areas that was her main concern was my prolactin level, which obviously if you don't know a lot about pro prolactin, it's something that is really only created when a mother is pregnant or she's breastfeeding. So my level shouldn't have been high. And so that was a weird and odd thing that, that those levels were so high. And she didn't really have a lot to go off of. I mean, she was, she's a fantastic doctor, but she's a nurse practitioner. So she didn't really specialize in, in the area that we were looking for. And so she had recommended, she had seen this before in her time of working there because she actually just retired this month. So she had seen this before and had said, you know, when I had seen this a couple of times that I've seen this, um, it's been because of a tumor. So I want you to get um, an MRI, which of course that was very scary to find that out. Yeah, and long, MRIs are, when you're just waiting on someone, <laughs> wow, that was like the longest 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was just sitting there holding your stuff and I was like, so how long is this thing supposed to last? And you said it was really loud too. Yeah. It was a very scary experience just because of the fact that like I never imagined that at 24 years old I would be like sitting in an MRI machine getting a scan of my brain. So we did that MRI and we're hoping really just to get answers. Honestly, we just hoped that it was what the doctor said because we were like, then we would have answers and we would know how to, how right. to proceed from there. 
we got the results back from that, which of course this took a lot of time to schedule the MRI to get the results back from the MRI. That was a long process of, of doing that. And after we got the results back, they did say that I um, have a small tumor on uh, in my brain. Um, it's called a um, micro adenoma, which pretty much just means that it's a very, very small tumor that's on the gland in my brain that controls my prolactin. And so that's what was making the levels so high and kind of just throwing me out of out of whack in general. I think it just has, from the husband's standpoint, it was one of those where too I was like, am I the problem? Like, is it is it me? So finding that out, even though it was horrible news to hear about, it was almost kind of reassuring that, okay, we know it's not like, I don't have anything that is working or we know it's it's not like this factor. The fact that we could pinpoint it did put us in a direction of like, okay, what's the next step from here? How do we attack this? How do we how do we get you back regulating? And then it immediately took us to uh, an endocrinologist who got you uh, put on this convergiline, which is a medication to help lower the prolactin level. We had a lot of fears about, about the tumor because we didn't know like, okay, it's a tumor in the brain. Like, what does that mean? Is it gonna grow? Is it gonna like, am I gonna have to get it removed? And those kinds of questions. So honestly, once we've learned more information about it, like it became less scary because we realized that it's really not, it's not cancerous. Like I'm not being harmed by it. Um, it's just really honestly causing us, causing me to be feel awful and have hormonal problems and causing us to not be able to have kids. Right. And so pretty much it's a form of infertility and it's it's not really like something that, like a normal form of infertility because I don't wanna presume to say that I like have dealt with what some other people have dealt with, but obviously this was a struggle in, in its own um, and in a form of infertility. And so we just kind of battled plan through that and we started taking the medication because they said that that would you know, kind of level everything out and would start me on, hopefully start me on a more normal track. And if that medication didn't work, they had another medication that they could give to me. And so I started on that medication and within four weeks of taking the medication, things were regulating for me again. It was, it, it felt very good, but obviously like I, we knew in our heads, like people had said like, you can't really expect anything to even begin to happen like three to six months until after taking this. Mm -hmm. So we knew like, honestly, we had decided like, we're not really going to try because yep. we knew like right now, apparently God was saying like, it's not our time. Pretty much what we decided is that we were going to foster instead of having our own kids because we thought like, maybe God is telling us like, this is not... For us, like maybe we're not supposed to have our own kids. And that was a really hard thing for Zach to deal with because like for me, I felt like I just want a kid. I don't know how, how I will get a kid, but I just want a kid. It doesn't matter to me. And for him, he was very much like, we need to have our own kid first. Well, and what made that really, I think difficult too, is having siblings who got pregnant like that. I mean, I don't know how long it took like my brother and sister to, to get pregnant but I mean it was one of those when you're sitting back and you see them get pregnant it's like oh okay that's it's easy right <laughs> that's that's the way that's the way I want it to be that's the way it, it should be but in reality that's not what God had planned at all he doesn't want you in control he wants you to let him be in control and when we finally it, it took a big change of heart for me just to realize like the foster system needs us whether in the future or now or whatever so it was after some, some message, I forget exactly what message it was, but afterwards on our drive home from church, we were like, let's foster, like let's let's actually commit and do this. And so we contacted um, people at Traders Point just to- Figure out how figure, we do yeah, this. Yeah, figure out, figure out what next steps are. Um, they sent us a book, they told us about a meeting coming up. I could tell immediately that once when we said yes to that, something about that felt right. And obviously when we felt that, we knew, like, okay, this God has his hand in the work here. And from there, I mean, it, it literally was like a domino effect. After we decided that we uh, were gonna do the foster care, that was um, on a Sunday. And um, what day was our anniversary? Was it Thursday? This year, it was on a- Thursday. Thursday, yeah. yes. So we decided that on Sunday night, um, after obviously after the sermon and everything, and had gotten in contact with someone almost immediately, which which is what made us feel like, yeah, this is like what we should be doing. So we like stopped focusing on having our own kids and more focusing on like fostering. And yep. so then 
it was just, but on Thursday, which uh, four or five days later after that, I was feeling really weird the past few days. And I like just took weird naps, which I never take naps. I'm, I'm a very um, active person. And so um, on that, I think it was that Wednesday and Thursday, it was over a break for me. So I had taken two, like two to three hour naps. So it was a very long time for me to take naps. Um, and I thought, this is really weird that I feel this tired. I normally never feel this tired. And so immediately it, it just threw a trigger in me because I didn't want to be excited because I knew like, you know, our, our struggles that we had had and that we, we knew that foster care was for us. And so I didn't want to get too excited, but I knew like there was something going on. And I, I felt like this is weird because it was actually our um, eight year anniversary of dating. And so I thought in my heart, like I was at Walmart, I thought in my heart, like if I actually am pregnant, like I want to know today because I would want to tell Zach on our eight year anniversary. I just thought that would be so special to for like for him to know on that day and it would really catch him off guard. Grabbed a couple of tests at the store when I was there, obviously like very freaked out when I grabbed the tests because I didn't want to be excited. I didn't want to like to think about that being a possibility. Honestly, I got the test to prove myself wrong so I would feel better, <laughs> you know? And so I got the tests and obviously took them and they were immediately positive. And I drove back to the store and I like got different tests because I felt like these are cheap tests. I yeah. need to get some better tests. So I got a more expensive test and obviously both of those were, were positive. And so I was freaking out at that point thinking like, is this real? Like can a plastic thing tell me that like I, I have a baby. And so, um, I like gave him a gift and long story short, like he was completely shocked. I was wondering why you wanted me home so fast. Cause I was obviously at work. <laughs> I get this, she called me on my drive home. She, we normally talk on the phone when we're when I'm on my way home. She was like, hey, are you on your way home? I was like, yeah. She's like, hurry. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to, obviously can't really dictate what the traffic's gonna be like. But I am, I didn't even think, I don't know why I didn't think about it, that it, that could have been a thing, but. Uh, well, because we had completely decided that like, no, it wasn't happening for us. So honestly, it wasn't even really on our radar. Which I think once we made that commitment, um, we left the door open for God to do his work. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, I mean, he came in really, really in, in, in powerful moving ways because I mean, I, again, I wasn't expecting it at all. I mean, you sit down and your spouse hands you a gift and you're like, wow, I feel terrible. I didn't reach the tech <laughs> squad. Sorry. Like, Cause no, we no. don't give each other gifts really uh, like we just would rather spend time with each other and, and go out to eat and that kind of thing. Yeah. thing. We just don't give gifts to each other. And so. That was kind of out of the blue for me to give a gift. So he felt horrible. Yeah, I was like, wow, I'm a terrible spouse and I didn't get you anything. So I feel like I need to get up and go get a gift now. But all in all, it was, it was a card, had the um, picture of the pregnancy test. And I literally like, I had a mix of emotions. I was like, is this real? And then she, of course she was just like, yes, it is. And then we cried for a while and rejoiced and then went and celebrated. So we've... We have um, been to multiple doctors, um, not multiple doctors, but let's start oh that over. My. So we've done all the appointments so far. Um, Anna is 15 yes. weeks. Um, we've done ultrasounds, we've done um, heartbeat, all that kind of stuff. And man, we feel so blessed yeah. in this process. I mean, the fact that she is making a baby in her belly is literally the most miraculous thing I've ever seen. Um, we were working on the nursery. Uh, man, what else? I feel like it's been a fast 15 weeks, which it's will It's gone make... fast, but really, really slow for me at the beginning, because right. uh, obviously, like, at the beginning, we were very, very nervous, and, like, nervous to tell people, because we were like, is this, is this real? Is this true? Like, am I going to be okay? Like... It, is everything going to be all right with the baby? And so I was very, very sick for the first 12 weeks. And luckily I never threw up, which was a huge thing, but I just felt horrible. I couldn't eat anything. I felt like there were random times I wanted to eat random things. And oh. it really made Zach upset because... It didn't help too that at the very <laughs> beginning of your pregnancy, you and I got a horrible stomach flu. Yeah, we got a horrible flu. And then after that, I got a horrible cold. I had to take off a day of work, which is 
not like me. I never take off work and I felt horrible taking off work. And honestly, like we're in a really good place right now, but we went through a really hard time and um, like we'll never forget that time that we went through. And like we want other people to know just like watching this and people who are our family and friends um, that like if anyone has gone through something like yeah. not, not even because I know our situation is kind of an odd situation. But if anyone's gone through a situation, whether that be like a miscarriage or whether that be um, infertility or whether that be like a stillbirth or anything like that, we want like those people to know that like our hearts go out to you. Like we sure. understand even if, even if it's in a small way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because no matter how awful it is, I mean, it sounds kind of cliche or whatever, but God has a plan in it all. His hand is in the works, even when you feel literally like at the at the most bottom part of like the hole that you that you feel like you're in, mm -hmm. God's got his arm there reaching out saying, I'll pick you up. I got a plan for you. Let's let's figure this out. I mean, I the thing that we always continue to think about is how much of a blessing this is because of, of the past year that we've that we went through. And that's like you said, I mean, anyone that is, that has gone through this or is going through it, know that you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Um there are people around you that are stuff that are struggling. I mean I remember we thought, man, this stinks. And then we talked to other people and it's like, wow, this is more frequent than you think about. Yeah, and, and I feel like a big part of doing this video is to say that because um, we don't just want to post something that's like, yay, congratulations, like we're pregnant, like we're so excited, which- Fireworks, we everything, good company. <laughs> which we are, we are so excited and we don't want to like dampen that <laughs> at all. We don't want to dampen that at all. Like we are so excited, but we also like know that like finding out about pregnancies is like not all sunshine and rainbows for people right. because when people see stuff like this on on social media it strikes like a really bad chord in your heart because if you're wanting a child and you see other people from the outside it seems oh it's so easy like yeah. it's not easy for a lot of people and it's and it's a struggle but like we want we want to in the biggest way communicate that like God is in control. Like we went through a very hard time where we were mad at God and we were frustrated and we were doubting and like, that's normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal to go through doubt. It's normal to like, to not think that God's on your side to think that like, I honestly like went through a time where I felt like he wanted bad things for me. And that was honestly like Satan telling me that because like, I know that God doesn't want anything bad for me. He wants everything good for me. And so I know that that wasn't coming from God. Yeah. But but all that to say, like, in the very end of this is that, like, we are over the moon. We're so excited. Um, we want to share with people now, finally, that we feel like everything's secure. Yep. Secure for now. I mean, obviously, we know anything could happen. But we're trusting God throughout this whole um, process and we wanted to let um, everybody know on here and be able to just share some positivity slash realness with yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, it's like we said it kind of towards the beginning of it. So we normally don't do something like this and we felt like it was necessary. So um, we're really excited for July the 3rd or earlier or later whenever <laughs> the baby decides to come. Well, th thanks for watching and, yeah. and listening to our story because Obviously, this takes up some of your time, and I hope you can send it to someone who it might mean something to, right. and that it might help someone else. Right. I know that uh, all friends and family of ours, we love you guys so much, and thank you for your support and your, um, your willingness to help out during the stressful situations. Mm -hmm. Again, we love you guys. Thanks for watching.